Runk. <laughs> hey guys, how's it going? Crystalia here. We are doing uh, some shows here. I got Tucson, Arizona coming up, Pueblo, Colorado, Colorado Springs, Charlotte, North Carolina, Knoxville, Tennessee, Little Rock, Arkansas, Memphis, Nashville, Calgary, Edmonton, Ottawa, Montreal, Hamilton, Pittsburgh, Cleveland, Detroit, Orlando, Fort Myers, Richmond, Baltimore. Man, this is like 25 dates. Philadelphia, Reading, Pennsylvania. Uh, go to chrislea.com to get tickets, the Don't Push Me Tour. Um, and other than that, uh, you can go get your merch over there. Uh, come on out to the tour, get tour-exclusive merch. Anyway, without further ado, welcome to another episode of Congratulations. Crazy, 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 crazy. We growing or we dying? That's that's my question for you. We got the grow or die merch out there, so you can rep it. I seen it out and about. I actually saw a guy with a Be More Memorable shirt today, uh, and he goes, "Hey!" and he pointed it, and I was like, "Oh, hey, what's up?" and he was, and he said, "Ah, I, lo- I love this shirt, man. I-, I really enjoy wearing it." I was like, "Oh, thanks so much." So thanks a lot to Sam there. I ran into you. His name was Sam. Um, yeah, and uh, anyway. Chrisley.com. But you know what? Um, it's time for another episode, and it's lit, dude. Oh, I didn't even check the, uh, what do you call it? Sound plant didn't show up, but uh, it is working now. Okay, so we're getting the buttons going and all that stuff. I uh, was at uh, a coffee shop earlier today, and um, no, not today. It was a few days ago. Who cares, right? Doesn't boy, What's it matter? Who cares? Um. And uh, I was just getting coffee. Let's see. What did I do before I went? I went to go pick up. Ooh, I went to a meeting. And then I went to go pick up. Uh, oh, yeah. It was a few days ago. It was Mother's. I went to go pick up Mother's Day flowers, which, by the way, really great place. I forget what it was called. Wildflower? I don't know. But so nice. The guy was so nice um, there. Well, I went to, First of all, I went to go get the um, stuff. And Kristen was texting me, and she was like, is that what it's called? Wild Stems. It's called Wild Stems. That's what it is. It's on Melrose or something, or Beverly. I don't know. It doesn't matter. It's in Hollywood. Whatever. Um, And uh, I went there, and um, I parked. And like a jerk, I was looking at the wrong side of the street for some reason. Like, you know how Google Maps shows it, and it says you've arrived. And I think it says on the right or left, but I I got out of the car, and I was like, I don't see, uh, it goes from a thing to another thing. It, it's not here anymore. And so now, like, I immediately just get mad because I want to blame somebody like, hey, Google Maps lied or my wife gave me the wrong address, even though she didn't because it said on the link. So I'm looking and then all of a sudden I hear the other side uh, of the street, Chris, and I'm like, Great, now I'm caught. Like, I got to take a pic with someone. Like, this is me. Mad and egotistical. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't I don't turn. When I've gotten, I've trained myself to, Chris, to not, because in the beginning when you get famous, they go, Chris, and you go, yeah, oh, I don't know. Oh, God. Hey, man, just want to say. And you're like, oh, really? Thank you very much. No, no, no. I, but also, and you're, you know. Uh, so, and it's nice, by the way, love, love the, love the fact that you listen and love the fact that there are fans out there. I, that's something I have to work on and I have worked on and now I'm way better at it. I really am. And, you know, I just, I saw this video the other day of like the three different Spider-Mans reacting to paparazzi. And at first it showed the guy, Andrew, whatever his name is. And he goes like this, he sees a paparazzi and he goes, and then I saw Tom, is it Tom Holland? Then it showed Tom Holland. And of course he was like, hey, 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 you know what I mean? Just nice to everybody. Can't trust a dude like that. <laughs> Can't trust a dude like that. And then it showed um, the other one, Toby Maguire. And he, you know, he's notorious for being a prick to the paparazzi. And he just goes like, he's just like, <laughs> so I'm trying to find out, like, I'm trying to ride the Andrew Garfield wave. That's what I want to be like Andrew Garfield. Um, cause he was like, yeah, Hey bud, what's up? Hi. You know, no head shaking. But anyway, guy goes, Chris. And I look over and he's got 900 bouquets of flowers. And I'm like, great. My wife spent a G. She didn't, you know, plus also I was, we had to get it for my mom and for my aunt and for my, we get it. Anytime there's a mother around. If I've known a mother for more than a week, we're getting them bouquets for mother's day. 
My wife just wants to be so nice to everybody. She's just like, well, we did meet those people at, you know, the park and they, you know, they said they were big fans. Let's send them a, let's send them a fruit basket for Mother's Day. I'm like, they don't even have kids. Well, um, yeah, my wife, any, you know, it doesn't matter what the holiday is. She'll make it. I think sometimes she even makes it up. She's just like, it's trees day. Send, we have to send people a plant. Okay. Um, so, so, so I, you know, so I, so we, I look over, he's got a hundred bouquets of flowers and it's, and he's running across the street and, and it's one of those situations where I want to be nice. And I'm like, wow, this guy's so nice. Looked as soon as I saw him, he was a Tom Holland type. I'm like, oh, this guy's the nicest guy. He had a beard and, and long hair. And he says, I got, I got you stay there. And I was like, oh, but I, I, cause my wife, he didn't unbeknownst to him. My wife had already texted me. We actually need two more bouquets. So she already ordered them. The guy was running them out to my car. And then I was, and I was like, oh, man. So I'll oh, thank you so much. I, I, I opened up the door. I put him in. Thank you. He's like, thank you so much for supporting our business. Nicest guy in the world. Wild Stems. Nicest business. So, and they did beautiful work, by the way. But um, so now I'm like, thanks so much. Put it in the car. Close the door. And then I'm in the car. And the guy goes back across the street. And I'm like, I got to get two more bouquets. Like, this is like. You know what I'm talking about? Like I, got, I already he already came out and did all, the nice thing. Now I got to go do the thing that he tried to defeat. He did, he tried to be nice to me that I didn't have to cross the street and go into the store. All of his thing was for naught, you know. Oh. It's like the end of a movie that like, you know, Matt Damon is in that you're like, oh, it was all for oh. Or even better, Casey Affleck. Oh, it was all for nothing. Oh. <laughs> so now I got to go in and get two extra small bouquets because we forgot about someone else who was a mother, two other mothers. And so I go in and I said, actually, I need two more uh, little bouquets. Can you Do you think you could handle that? And I said, sure. And he says, oh, sure. I'm right there. So I'm, I'm, you know, I'm waiting and I'm chilling. And I'm looking out and it's like, there's, I guess there's like some sort of arts district where I was. I had no idea. Like there were like, a, there was like a museum and then another museum. And I'm like, where am I? I had no idea where I was. But then he gives us two bouquets that were even smaller than the uh, other bouquets that we got. We got three bouquets and two bouquets and the two bouquets were the small one. The two bouquets cost an arm and a leg. So I don't even know how much the big bouquets were. I'm like, dude, I got home. I'm like, don't tell me how much the big bouquets were. I'd rather not know. Dude, I don't want to know. When somebody tells me how much something costs that I got to pay for, I don't want to know. I got a business manager and I got a wife. Okay? I got those two people keeping it in check. I don't know how much my wife is keeping it in check, but I definitely know my business manager is keeping that sh in check. So, anyway. Trials and tribulations, my babies. So... I, then I went to get to the coffee. I was like, I'm getting, you know what? I went, I'm such an idiot, dude. I went to an, I went to a meeting, a recovery meeting, and then I went to go get the bouquets. So I get to do something for me now. So I go, I get a cup of coffee, dude. You know how we do it. We sat with the iced Americano. Did he actually get the iced Americano? No. Did he get cold brew? Yes. Why didn't he get a four shots over ice? Because he had to sit in the table and order it off an app. So he did it. He ordered it off an app and he couldn't pick four. Shots of espresso, because every time he picks four shots of espresso off an app, they always mess it up. It'll either give me two shots or give me four different espressos over ice. And then I got four cups. So what I did is I just got to go and make it easier. Yes, dude. Anyway, man. Um. So I got the, the cold brew instead, and I'm sitting there just loving it. And I ordered also a warm fucking rice bowl with chicken. Oh, I wasn't even hungry, but I knew I had to eat something, right? And I had a Mother's Day dinner a little bit later, so I know I had to eat something to just kind of whet my appetite. Do you eat when you're not hungry? I do sometimes because my mom always used to say, I, I eat or you're going to get sick. Yeah, it affected me. So now I eat sometimes when I'm not hungry because I think like it was already two and I was like, I'm not hungry. I guess I'm just going to, what do I, what do I do? Just give up? Do I not eat today? Like, what's the deal? Do I just wait till tomorrow? You know? Because then I'm like, well, Calvin doesn't eat. And sometimes I'm like, you got to eat. And then I'm like, well, am I doing what my mom did? So now, when are you supposed to eat? I don't know, man. 
People do the intermittent fasting. They don't eat for like 15 hours or some shit. They have like a, they eat in like a four hour window. They just gorge. Anyway, dude. So I'm eating the warm bowl with the, it's fine. It's okay. I'm not really that hungry. And I'm drinking the thing. And all of a sudden this dude comes by with like one. Of, first of all, he's got, what do you call it? The fucking selfie stick, which is go away you know i'm talking about like remember when everyone was getting them and then but then okay it was annoying but how about that there's still people that have those and use them and they aren't asian you know what i'm talking about for some reason if you see an asian with any sort of electronic electronic or fashion you kind of just give them a pass you're like you got like oh well you know they're fucking they're from way far away so really it's almost like they they're on like like any place that's really far away. Like Mexico, no. Canada, absolutely not. You you know, London, no. A little bit. If you meet somebody like, oh no, I said Cowan, he's got like orange goggles on, you're like, eh, okay. But Japan, India, Asia, Russia, you know what I'm talking about? You see a Russian dude with like a, just a, like a big like Tommy Hilfiger cape on and you're like I don't I guess they wear those over there it gets cold but like or or a Japanese guy with like all leather and a leather hat with a leather horn on it and he's got like google glasses and you say like, you know I I don't know I guess he's really small and thin and wavy like what else is he going to do but dude I straight up just saw a Mexican dude with a selfie stick like that's crazy to me to see a Mexican dude with a selfie stick, just like a portly dude. And he wasn't even doing it like this. Like he was just walking down the street. Like you ever see someone walking down the street and you're like, where's your car though? Do you know what I'm talking about? Like, did you park and you're and walking or like, well, he wasn't shopping, just dude walking around with a selfie stick. And I'm sure he was from L.A. Like, it wasn't a tourist thing. So he was walking around with a selfie stick. And this is the worst part, okay? For, well, actually, there's two worst parts. He was holding it on his belly. So it was, like, resting on his belly, poking out from his belly, like a piece of lazy shit, okay? And and sauntering around, the only Mexican dude with a, a fucking selfie stick within a 50 mile radius and we're in LA. So Mexican dudes are a uh, plenty and he's just holding it, chilling it off with it on his pot belly. And this is the worst part. One of the other worst parts, the camera was facing outward. So he's not even doing what a selfie stick is supposed to be used for. It's called a selfie stick because it's supposed to be shooting you. I thought maybe he had a fucking, you know, some stupid internet show where he's just like, hello, well, you know, hey, welcome, dog. This is fucking, you know, Melrose Weekly. We going on Melrose and see what the fucking guy's chumps buying on fucking Mother's Day, dog. Guy got five bouquets, man. Try to fucking act like he didn't get five bouquets, man. Got four, three bouquets. I had to go in anyway, man. Anyway, what's your name? You know? So, so he's, he's pointing outwards and, I, and, and, and he doesn't see me and, and he doesn't see me and I'm like, Okay, well, he doesn't see me, so that's good. But now I'm gauging, is the guy going to recognize me or not? Because if he, if he recognizes me, uh, I'm cooked, right? Because it's just going to be on me, okay? So I'm just kind of drinking my shit to myself, right? Because also, the other time, when someone's videoing me, I can't be like, don't video me. Because then people are going to be like, oh, Chris Aaliyah was a piece of shit. He yelled at someone, that's assault, right? And so he doesn't see me. But what he is doing is recording a, a fucking two, a, a couple and another woman are together. It's like a third wheel thing. There's a couple and then another woman. And he's just like this. He's just like this, drinking something, just like this. Selfie stick extended, bitch ass selfie stick. Imagine going like this. So he's doing it and it's like a minute passes. 
And the the one of the ladies takes the menu, and she's just like kind of blocking it, and then other guys doing it like this, and they're not saying anything. I want to say something because you know me, dude. Johnny confrontation, right? But I'm also like, eh, it's on video, could be live. All of a sudden, Crystalia, you know. So, and he's also not shooting me. But in a way, I want to be like, a, you know, because I've been watching that show Titan from HBO Max. And I'm like, dude, I'm kind of like that, a superhero. So I kind of want to save these people, right? Like, I'm a little bit like Nightwing in a way. So I'm like, okay. So I don't say anything. And then the lady from the thing from that's getting recorded looks at me at laughing like what's this guy doing and when she does that he swings it over to me lady know the game okay hey lady I'm not a part of this. Now he got me involved. So now, I'm pissed. Now, God, deal with this crazy dude, okay? Swings it over to me. Now he's filming me. And I get up and walk over to him. Because Johnny, confrontation, baby. But he's still recording. He backs up a little bit, like, what's this guy going to do? Still recording. And I, like, sidestep, and I look at his screen on his phone because I'm like, I want to know 100% if he's recording. Sure enough, he's recording. And he looks at me and says, hey, bro, what's your problem? (laughs) Dude, when I tell you just heat, just the my blood just immediately... Ding, it's done, curdling, okay? my Inside my body, blood in my veins, curdling. Dude, I want it to be like, oh, dude, congratulations, man. You made my blood curdle. That's so awesome for you, dude. But I didn't say shit because I don't want him to record me, so I just leave. And I left coffee early, and he fucking won, I guess. He won, dude. <laughs> Yay, dude, thank you for winning. Uh, you know what, man? Th- this is the fucking, God damn it, fuck. The, 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 it's the thing with the, cause we gotta, here's the thing. That guy deserves to get leveled. All right. He deserves to get smacked in his lip. Whoops. Said it. But he does. The guy deserves to get a nice fucking Tom Hanks pap or a, what was the, or the Burt, I got Burt Reynolds slap. That's what he deserves to get. Just a nice Burt Reynolds Pat, right in his, hey, well, that's what you get, right? Stage. He deserves a nice Burt Reynolds 80s pat right in his lip to where not not too much damage, but where he just goes like, did I, did something? And it's and, it, and then he wakes up the next day and it's actually fine. <laughs> you know, like that's what he deserves. Oh shit, did he fucking, and then no, this is the thing, man. So now, because he can put it online, so everyone's got to be on their best goddamn behavior, even if somebody's being a shithead, right? And then part of me is like, should I tell the establishment? But I'm not a fucking tattletale. I deal with my shit on my lonely. I deal with my shit by my lonely. Everybody knows that about Dalia. Dalia, who's that? The guy who deals with his shit by his lonely? Okay, fine, yeah. All right, well, then he's not going to tattle. I don't tattle, dude. I don't fucking tattle, bro. (sighs) Anyway, dude, I brought the bouquet of flowers home, and it was absolutely fantastic. My wife was happy, and everyone else was happy. And all the mothers in my life were happy. So... Happy fucking Mother's Day. Dress like my son on fucking... Now, did I dress like my son on Mother's Day? Hell yes. Did I dress like my other son on Mother's Day? Hell yes. Did we see what my wife was going to wear and then all match together? Hell yes. Was that four Delias that look exactly the same? Hell yes. And I'll tell you why. Because that's what I do. And people go, that's corny. And I say, it's actually not. I judo it. Do you think it's corny I dress like my family? <laughs> well, turns out it's not corny. I dress like my family and that's actually bitching. I can't, dude, 
I haven't. I I dressed like Cal. I looked very cool. Okay. And William also had on. Yeah, no, he had his version of it, right? Because he's got to wear like little. When you're a baby, you can dress in bitch ass shit, right? Like when you're one, you get dressed up in shit. Like I think Calvin had a fucking sailor uniform. Like we don't even know. You can do that because ah, it's a little bit fucking. You know, uh, what do you call it? Uh, exploitative, exploitive, exploitative, exploitive. Is there an extra syllable in there? I have no idea. Anyway, dude, you can dress him up like a penguin, and you're like, oh, look, he's a little penguin. You don't do that to like a twenty year old. Oh, we got him a penguin out. He's a little fucking teddy bear. That's so bitch, you know? But Calvin for sure had a sailor outfit. And Kristen was like, wh- when he was young, and she was like, look how cute. And I was like, he fucking, he, he looks gay. And it's fine. But like, just let him decide that later, not at one. Right? Because I don't want to be one of these parents that's like, you can be whatever you want. You, sh-. you know, I used, to, I, knew, I used to know this woman that was like, his son, her son was a, Made, she made it she convinced him he was a female because she was like so woke and she was like are you sure you don't want the dress the dress is nice and the baby's like but I'm supposed to wear it and she's like well that's, if you want to live in the construct of society sure but if you want to think do we think on our own and it's like you know so now my, grow, my son grows up to be a fucking sailor I'm pissed or a teddy bear um, I used to, when I was a kid, I wanted to grow up to be, my, my brother would, would say, I want to grow up and be a cowboy. And I was like, you can't grow up to be a cowboy. You have to actually be something that exists. And then my mom said, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I said, a werewolf, like legit. I thought like you couldn't be a cowboy, but you could be a werewolf. That's the truth. I don't know what the fuck is wrong with me, but <sighs> is what it is, right? Happy freaking Mother's Day. And then we, we did Mother's Day. This, that was the Saturday. And then the Mother's Day, Mother's Day, woke up. My wife went to go get her hair blown out because I was like, what do you want to do for Mother's Day? We could do anything. And she was just like, yo, check this out. Nothing. And I was like, what? Is this a trick? Right? Right? No, nah, I don't want anything. And then the, the fucking 9 p.m. rolls around. She's getting into bed. And she's like, I just, I know I said, but it's like, you know, uh, and you go, I'm fucking fucked. But she was telling the truth. She's like, I asked her nine times. She's like, I just want to go get my hair blown out. I want to get my lashes done. I just want to go out, just take care of the kids. And I'm like, okay, dude, I'll sit at home with the kids. Now, you know, I want her to be here and help, but okay, it's Mother's Day. So she goes out and does it, gets her hair blown out, decides not to do the rest of the day, comes back, and I'm sitting there just like fucking... Yeah! So we did nothing and we just chilled. And then she was like, you want to go to the Grove? And we went to the Grove. Was it too crowded? Eh, Yes, but it's okay. We went to the Grove. We had dinner. It was absolutely nice, dude. And then we came back. We got cupcakes. Dude, what's up with that Sprinkles Cupcakes place? The gourmet shit. They trick you with that gourmet shit. First of all, you can get, they have Sprinkles vending machines where you can get a cupcake from a vending machine. Like, Like it's a fucking, like it's Gatorade or some shit. After a workout, you know, it's like, oh, fucking, oh, dude. Ooh, get me a triple cinnamon. Get me a red velvet uh, fucking just eating that. Ah, this was a bad idea, huh, man? I feel, I need something to drink, dude. Oh, I got to go home. I got a stomach ache, man. I think I got a little bit of cream cheese on my fucking, I don't understand. Cream, you know what cream cheese belongs on? Bagels. That's it. There, I said it, dude. I'll die that. I'll, I'll, I'll die on that hill. I'll die on that hill. Put it with salmon. Get out of here, dude. So Jewish. L- lox, you know? Ah, it's salmon, right? Ah, it's lox and cream cheese. Ah, you're not tricking no one, right? Salmon? Oh, uh, yeah. Just, you know, it's like what I'm saying is you put it with the cream cheese and it's a little bit different. Ah, you're not tricking anyone, right? That's salmon if I cook it. If I put that on some rice, where we where we eat? Jap, j- that's a fucking salmon, right? No, I'm just saying, you know? That's lox. All right. Okay, right? Okay. Because of the Kanye shit, fine. You can have lox be lox. But, um, yeah, we got the fucking... Uh, why did I talk? start talking about salmon? Cream cheese? Oh, yeah, the bagels, dude. I don't like cream cheese in the... Dude, every other cupcake has fucking cream cheese in it. Did you know that? The icing? And guess who tastes it, dude? Your boy. I taste it. They go, ah, my wife says, it's really, you can't. I can, dude. I can. 
putting fucking cream cheese in the cinnamon, the triple cinnamon cupcake, dude. That's disgusting. Who are you, Guy Fieri? Keep my cupcake. You know what I like, dude? How about this? I want my cupcake dry. Dude, I got good taste, man. I got good taste. I want no cream cheese. I want a little bit of icing. How about that? Not even that much, dude. Because they cake it on at the Sprinkles vending machines places. They cake it on, dude. God, imagine working for Sprinkles, man. And you're the guy who has to load the cupcakes in the vending machine. <laughs> just, just that's your fucking job. And I'm the no knock, dude. I know it's hard to get a job. By the way, they must. They, I bet they, that company pays you probably well. But dude, like, now I'm, there's something so fucking like I'm not, dude. Loading Powerade in a vending machine. That's a that's a, a nice American job. But you're the guy who brings fucking cupcakes to serve to these rich fucks. You know what I mean? Just a twenty five dollar cupcake. You're just putting a, a cupcake in a. In a in something that literally should just be a Funyuns, uh, can't think of the word, and I'm not even taking the gabapentin slot. So that's cool. That's cool. I couldn't think of the word slot. But yeah, that's your job. Oh uh, yeah, what do you do? Work for? Uh, I work for Sprinkles. Oh really? Like in the store? Nah, I load the vending machines. Oh, yeah. So. Anyway, um, yeah, so, uh, we went to go do sprinkles and we did it and, uh, I don't like the gourmet stuff though. Like, like, uh, how do you fuck up a brownie? Anything other than Duncan Hines. That's it. There. I said it. That's it. How do you fuck up ice cream? Dude, haagen is fine. That's the shit. What's the other one with the two fat guys? Ben and Jerry's? That's fine. That's the shit. The second you got to go to like, what do they got? McConnell's and shit. And it's like, oh yeah, but the chocolate's actually from, boo. Oh, but the chocolate's, oh yeah. And the pistachio is, by the way, which I'll fucking house. I'll house the pistachio ice cream. But if you make it gourmet, dude, boo. Yeah, but they source the fucking, oh, what's the other one? The one, uh, the, the. The one salt and straw? Is that what it's called? Olive oil ice cream? Hey, 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 sit on that. Olive oil ice cream? Sit on it, dude. You're not tricking me, gourmet. You give me chocolate and you put fucking sprinkles on it. And that's it or none. Are you a kind of piece of shit that puts the, the Swedish fish on it? Nah. We deal with the hard hitting issues and that's why this cult is alive fuck npr we talk about actual things like too many bouquets on mother's day and also ice cream and cream cheese (laughs) i woke up today and i fucking sat my son in front of the tv and i look around tv and he's like let's watch something and i i I guess what i turned on alf He's G'd up from the feet up, isn't he, dude? He put on Alf. Not only, dude, I was so, I was respectful about it, too. I didn't just turn on some episode. I put on the pilot of Alf, dude. What's his stream? You're probably like, oh, what's his streaming on? What the fuck is that? Yo, YouTube, man. YouTube premium. I put that shit on. Man, the pilot of Alf is the fucking worst thing you've ever seen. Just straight up. It's so bad. Dude, it begins, it begins with the family looking at the fucking Alf guy. And the dad's like, I found him outside. Uh, Sadie's. What do we do? And then the kid is like, whoa, he's hairy. And then the dad says, it's an Alf. And I go. Here we go. Then, of course, someone else says, well, what's an ALF? And he says, an alien life form. And I say, even Calvin goes like this. Here we go. And then his son says, it's heavy and hairy. And then ALF says, hey, guys, or some shit. And then the kid's like, it's heavy and hairy and it can talk. 
And the crowd's like, ah, ha, 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 ha. And I'm just like, Jesus Christ. And then Alpha's like, can I eat your cat? This is all in the first four minutes. And then they say, no, but you can stay here for the night. Hey, you got kids. They're letting the Alf go in the fridge and give the kid, kid beer. And then they're like, oh, it's the 80s, dude. Alf needs to get canceled, dude. I'll tell you what. Alf, it would never be made nowadays. First of all, well, for, for, first and foremost, because it sucked. But second of all, because of uh, it's just not right. It's probably cultural appropriation or something like that. But dude, Alf is so bad. And then the fucking dad from Alf, uh... I'm like, who is this guy, you know? He's probably some, like, dope theater actor that, like, got this role. And then got when he got this role, he, like, fucking hated everyone. You know what I'm talking about, man? Man, that's so awesome, living that kind of a life. Being, like, a really well-respected theater guy that won't even touch Broadway because he's like, fuck that. I do off-Broadway black box shit. And I only play roles of like, uh, uh, like, uh, uh, of like hardworking blue collar men plays from like 1940 with, and I only, and I wear a wife beater in, in every, every play, no matter what I, even if it's cold, even if it takes place in the winter. And every ma and every time there's like some monologue where he's like, you know, I used to play tennis when I was a kid and then it starts and it's like about abuse when he was a child and, and, uh, and then get and then so anyway, well, I, I don't know what fucking I'm making this up about the guy from Alf, but then he got he's in Alf now. And so this is an imaginary thing that I'm making up for fuck's sake. But he it was in Alf. <laughs> the guy that <laughs> the guy that I'm making up the thing about how he was on off Broadway black box, only play things with white beaters and played from the 1940s. That imaginary part is actually the real part is I'm making it up about a guy that was actually an Alf for fucking five, six years. I don't know. There were 99 episodes of Alf, which is like, just do a hundred for fuck's sake, you know? And, um, it was so bad. And then I Googled the fucking dad. Cause I'm like, who is this guy? Who are any of these guys? You know, the kid and Alf probably grew up and died of HIV. You know what I'm talking about? Like that. I don't, I don't know, but like, you know, somebody in that show died from HIV, right? There's no way you could be on a hit show in the 80s and grow up and not die from HIV. Not one person? Like Starskin Hutch, that guy did, I think. Mr. Belvedere probably did. Uh, so look at this. Wright, is that the dad? Wright also had a stage career in 1968, appeared in the original production of The Great White Hope at the arena stage. Oh, this is hilarious. He appeared on Broadway in Ivanov, which garnered him a Tony nomination. Dude, uh, I played Sir Andrew in Twelfth Night at the, at the Lincoln Center. in the Bro, he's sick with it, isn't he? He knows what he's... Look at this. He knows. I know faces, dude. When I see shit, I know faces. I get it. One time I was at the Grove, actually, with one of my ex-girlfriends a long time ago. And I said, look at that guy over there. What do you think about that guy? And she says, I don't know. What do you think about that guy? I said, I guarantee he makes his own furniture. And she says, get the fuck out of here. What do you mean? That's so silly. And I said, why don't you watch? She, she had balls. Not actual balls, but she was like, she had gusto. So I was like, why don't you go ask him? And she fucking walked over to him, sat down, starts talking. I couldn't hear him. He was near the fountain. And she looks over at me and she goes like this. And I said, what? And she walks over and she said, he actually does make furniture. And I go, dude, I know faces. I'm good like that. I got it nice. I'm nice with it. N yeah, I knew that. Alf had 99 episodes. That was actually something I knew. And so anyway, this dad, I I, I look him up, at, uh, or I look up Alf, the show, and this headline reads something about how this guy, that guy, right, whatever his name is, um, the tabloids were like just ruining him. In like, like when he right before he died, he was in his seventies, and I felt so bad, dude. It was like Wright is now a shell of himself, and he really hit a low point, and he's a piece of shit. It was like the media sucked even back then, you know. Well, I mean, this was what ten years ago. I don't know, but um, and then the guy and they were like, he he's he's reportedly been like smoking crack in a basement somewhere in a crack house, and like off and like pays dudes a, a, a hundred dollars to fuck them like male prostitutes. And I'm like, bro, that's my motherfucker. You know what I'm talking about? Here's a hundred. Thanks, sir. 
Hey, are you the guy from Bird? <laughs> Hi, sir. Here's a hundred dollars. Hey, thank you very much. Turn around. All right. Hey, wait a second. Are you from Word? <laughs> Dude, hell yeah. The guy from Alf. Alf. Um, just a montage of different dudes. There we go. That's creepy. Tell me more about that. Um, that's my motherfucker paying dudes a hundred dollars to, you know, being a mail crack guy is pretty legit. I don't know. I feel, but I, I felt so bad for the guy because he obviously suffers from addiction. And then I realized, and then I saw the, there's a movie Permanent Midnight that like is based on the guy who apparently. Create like wrote for Alf and would like do like coke benders for like weeks and just write jokes on uh, all day for Alf and it's like and then I and it was a hit so it was you know but then I'm like man this guy was on benders for and wouldn't sleep for weeks and fucking write jokes at Alf's like maybe get some rest these jokes suck and they made that movie Permanent Midnight where Bruce or Brent Ben Stiller uh, what do you call it played the guy. But I wish they made the fucking movie about the dad from Alf. God. Poor guy. Addiction is real, man. Addiction is... Man. That's why I can't start doing drugs. If I start doing drugs, holy fucking shit, man. I swear, I snort one... I snort one line of coke, and it's just... I snort one line of coke and it's just. I snort one line of coke and it's just. I've had over 40 pizzas in the last 30 days. <laughs> Dude. That's so disgusting, you know? Um, whatever. How could you, how could you not have a crack addiction? If you were in a show in the 80s and 90s about a fucking in Alf and not. Uh, I bet that set was crazy, dude. The puppets, the star, you know. The puppets, the star. Why did I also Alf had a Brooklyn accent, you know. Eh, so dumb. We went to see Mario. Did I talk about that on the podcast yet? My son and I. We're an hour in, and he goes like this. Is it over yet? All right, let's go. Pack it up. He said, can I bring my Sprite? I said, sure. And now now my son walks around and says, Mario. He says, Mario, because we got a magnet. Got it. We got magnets. He loves those magnets. They're too small. Um. Here's the fucking, this is what I was talking about, the olive oil. Starbucks' new olive oil coffee is allegedly making people poop a whole lot. <clears throat> I mean, the fact that they put the word hole in it a whole lot. This is from self.com. <clears throat> Lots of us depend as if you need to shit more when you drink coffee. Yeah, put, put, why don't you put uh, olive oil and X-lax in it? That'll be good. They just call your name, Chris, and <clears throat> you just shit right there. Oh, God, I'm sorry. I got to, I don't know what it is, but. Lots of us depend on coffee in the morning as a morning pick me up, but some folks in social media are reporting the Starbucks new product line is waking up their bodies a little too much. I mean, no shit, dude. Olive oil. Sweet and lush favor, velvety smooth. But it turns out that it might be a little too smooth after the drinks launched. Some people who tried to after the drinks launched, people's anus is launched. Some people who tried to who tried them took to social media to describe an unintended side effect. No, that's the intended side effect, dude. Starbucks is fucking with you. God, Starbucks is terrible. Um, well, vomiting too. What's behind that? To start, there's a good amount of caffeine in these beverages. For example, a grande drink in the line ranges. Because it's coffee, that part isn't surprising. The fat content, however, is another story. Because the amount of fat ranges from 17 grams to 34 grams in a single grande cup. Uh, in the... Uh, okay, whatever. Oleato line? What the fuck is that? Whatever, dude. 
acid, plus the combination of two foods. Yeah, I've, hey, you know, if you need a, an article to tell you that olive oil coffee is going to make you blow it out your asshole, eh, you're an idiot. Um, remember that song, Blow It Out Your Asshole by L- Ludacris? It's like... Um, I was in the, uh, I was in the, uh, I went to go do a show at the Ha Ha Cafe. I was there and, um, I went on stage. I didn't, I, it was one of those nights where I was just like, man, I've been doing a lot of road and I was just like, I don't know, maybe I'll go. But then I know some people bought tickets for me. So I was like, I'll go there. I love the Ha Ha Cafe. It's fucking, it's so awesome. It's in North Hollywood. It's like when there's a good crowd there, it's popping, dude. I mean, that's a, it's a great comedy club. But shout out to Jack and Terry who own the club. Um, so I went in and I, and I, and I, and I went to go on. And by the way, Lulu was there. She went on. Um, and I didn't know she went on. Um, I didn't know she was gonna be on the show. Lulu, I bring her on the road. She's fantastic. And uh, I get there and my buddy's texting me, Lulu's crushing. And I'm like, great, I got to fucking go after it. Because when everyone's crushing all night in LA, it's a way harder show. Then I go there and Preacher Lawson goes on and I don't see him, but I know he crushes because he's great. And my buddy's like, do new material. And I'm like, no, I, I, I can't do it. Look, everyone's crushing. And, um, and then Darren Carter goes up, who like brings a flashlight on stage and does audience suggestions. I mean, this guy, the audience eats him up, okay? He's named, he calls himself Darren Carter, the party starter. And he, boy, does he, dude. And he fucking levels this room. And I'm like, I'm not going, dude, I don't even want to go up. And they're like, go up. And they're like, do new material. I'm like, new material? This shit has been, this is a fucking bar mitzvah. So I go up on stage, people clap, you know, and I clap a little too long, whatever your boy hops on. I'm happy. And I go up and I fucking start to do well. Like I do a few silly jokes. I make fun of a guy in the front row and I go, oh shit. Ho ho. Your boy's right where he needs to be. And then I dip in a new material, dude. I did about 15 minutes of new material, which by the way, I didn't write. I have no idea. Just kind of stories in my head that I maybe wanted to tell. And a holy shit, bro. I, 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 I actually like I killed and I'm like, fuck man, I, I should have recorded this. I'll remember it. And there's one part where I say something about Jeremy Renner as a joke, a side joke. And it gets a big laugh. And I'm like, God, that's fucking weird. I didn't think that that part was particularly that funny. And I, I didn't even think about saying it. I just said it. After I get off the stage, my friend is like, hey, Jeremy Renner's family is here. And I go, and I was like, get the fuck out. I said the thing about the, and they're like, I know. I was like, I, I don't, this is the first time I've done the joke. I have no idea. And I met them and they were so nice, dude. And they were so cool. And we rapped for a bit. And, uh, so shout out to his family. Um, but they were great. I just thought it was so funny because they know, obviously I talk about him on the podcast. I'm a big fan of Jeremy Renner and, uh, they had seen me in Irvine a year or two ago. And, um, it was just kind of funny. It was one, it's also, here's the other thing too. That day I felt like utter shit the whole day, like utter shit. I did not want to go on stage. I wanted to just be home. I was just in my feelings. You know, you get like that. And I went and I was not feeling it. And then I was like looking for every opportunity. You got one shot, one opportunity to get out of the situation. You got one time to make an excuse to better be good. Um, and I was like, maybe I won't go up. And I just made my feet walk on stage. And I fucking had a great, and it turned it all around, dude. Feelings are only a, a, a moment. You know what I'm talking about? I don't mean to get all, but feelings are only a mo- are only a little bit. You can deal with this shit. Let me get real for a second. You can deal with this shit because moments keep happening and soon you're out of the one that you don't want to be in. And it also sucks. Sometimes you're in a fantastic moment and then it ends, but whatever. 
It's like it's not going to stop fucking Martha Stewart from being on the cover of swimsuit, I- fucking illustrated sports suit, swimsuit illustrated. Does anybody fucking read magazines anymore? Like this is so weird. It's so weird. Martha Stewart is on Sports Illustrated swimsuit issue, but God bless her, man. Whatever. You know what? She did her time in jail, and it's all good. She did her time in jail, and it's all good. And now she's on the cover of Sports Illustrated swimsuit. Um, it would be great if she was in like a fucking really skimpy suit, just that's all out and shit. You know, holding a pie, just so shitty. But she did. I bet that lit up the internet. Some people can do no wrong, right? Isn't it crazy? Isn't it fucking nuts? Just Martha Stewart just to prison for stealing. What did she go to? For what? What is it? Insider trading. Insider trading. Just fucking going to jail and now everyone's like, ah, celebrate her. Ezra Miller. I just saw a video where Ezra Miller is on video choking out a female fan and throwing her on the ground. And everyone's like, yeah, but I want to see Michael Keaton, Michael Keaton be Batman again. It's like, dude, it's crazy, bro. World's mixed up, huh? Globally renowned businesswoman Martha Stewart made Sports Illustrated Swimsuit History Monday as the 81-year-old was revealed as the oldest cover model in publication history. Dude, 81. That's crazy, dude. Honestly, she looks really good on the cover. That's, I, I'm assuming that's probably pretty airbrushed, not because of her age, just because of how it usually, everything's airbrushed. She looks great. She's actually, she's hot, huh? 81? This has to be airbrushed. I'd smash. Is that okay to say that nowadays? I'd smash. Um... I'd smash beautifully. Is what I mean to say. I'd smash. Oh, wow. I'd smash beautifully. All due respect, I'd smash. Good for her. Uh, Attacker who allegedly robbed a man at gunpoint gets caught after staying at crime scene to eat victims' fried chicken. Now, I'm not going to... Look, I understand the times... And I get, I get, we shouldn't be prejudiced and racist, but at some point, you just got to be like, we know what, we know what, we know the race of the guy who did it, right? I'm just right? Like, I'm just saying, like, look, and I am not saying because, you know, there's that whole meme where it's like there was a making fun of how there was a meme I was reading about making fun of how black people steal. And I'm just like, that's not cool, bro. That ain't cool, man. I laughed. And then I was like, that's not cool. I laughed really hard about the meme. The meme was really funny. I go, I laugh. And I'm like, that ain't cool. And then I sent it to one of my friends and he laughed. And I'm like, yeah, but we both agree that's not cool. But it was funny. But come on, dude. And then so not the thing. But then to, to couple it with the how he stayed for the fried chicken, uh, we get it. Hey, dude, who did it? Just who did it? That's all I'm saying, right? Trevor or Darnell, right? So look at this, the way they put it. A criminal's love for fried chicken may result in him. I mean, more of the love for money. And facing him a 20-year prison sentence, James Taylor, his name is. The whitest name of all time. Unbelievable, dude. Phil Collins. Phil Collins stayed for the... Dude, James Taylor, isn't he the guy that high hell son and I feel rain penny put in and no 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 all my songs sound the same but ain't the deal I never wrote a song that didn't sound like this one but ain't the deal I'll sing a song later and it'll be this one but ain't the deal So so James Taylor twenty was in the process of robbing a man who had just bought a bag of freshly fried chicken. When asked to hand over all his belongings, the victim did so, including the bag of chicken, instead of taking off with the bucket uh, of his bucket of ill-gotten booty. I mean, you know, the suspect decided he would rather eat the chicken right there. God, dude, that's so funny that he was like, yo, fool, give me all your fucking money. And then what's that? Yo, that shit smell MAGA. What is that? Damn, give me that shit too. Get the fuck out of here. All right, let's get... Ah, oh, fuck, man, this shit. You know what? 
Hold up. <laughs> Fuck this, man. This chicken be hitting, really. Please show up. Freeze. God damn, I knew this shit was going to get me in trouble. He should have just thrown the chicken and see if the cops, are, all the black cops run after it. White cop arrests him, tackles him down. Damn, man. Wish y'all were all black. I'm racist, I guess. Um, dude, um, I really appreciate you guys. I can't wait. Dude, by the time this podcast airs, I'm going to be done with my shows in Salt Lake City and Boise. Salt Lake City, I know, is sold out. I uh, don't know if Boise will be sold out or not. But uh, because it's right, I'm shooting this a week before of the time that the show happened. Anyway, whenever you get it. But um, like and subscribe. Dude, it helps so much. Like and subscribe. And also what helps is leaving a comment in the algorithm. So we uh, appreciate you. And uh, dude, I think I'm actually feeling good because of that magic mind shit. Uh, magic mind. I drink it with my coffee. But dude, you guys, uh, yeah, go to get the tickets. Where am I going to be here? Let's look. Uh, where am I going to be here? I'm going to be in uh, 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 Pueblo, Colorado, Tucson, Colorado Springs, Charlotte, North Carolina, Knoxville, Little Rock, Memphis, Nashville. Can't wait to play the Ryman. That's legendary. I'm playing the Ryman in, in the. I'm playing the Ryman in Nashville. Edmonton, Ottawa, Montreal, Hamilton is all sold out. Pittsburgh. Oh, also, dude, go watch the fucking uh, tour vlog that I do. It's fun as shit. Um, the one from Columbus was was probably the best one we've done. It was so fun. We were on those Lime scooters. Richmond, Virginia, Baltimore, Philadelphia, Reading. And we're adding more. Um, and I keep on saying, I keep on teasing uh, Australia dates. They are coming. They just are not coming yet. But they are coming. So be ready. All right? Be ready, eh? You know what I mean? That's it for the episode on YouTube. If you want the raw, the uncut, the unedited version uh, of this podcast, go to uh, go over to our Patreon. Patreon.com slash Crystalia. You get it all in its intended uh, manner. And also, you get an extra episode a month. Uh, and that is uh, every month. So we have also have like 27 of them now. So if you sign up today, you can go listen to all those immediately. That's a lot of content for that ass. So that is patreon.com slash Chris, uh, Chris Patreon.com slash Chris Thank you very much, you guys. Have a good one.